Welcome to another tutorial episode about how you can get more free stuff from playing OOTP. Do you like free stuff? Do you like free packs? Well, hopefully, if you're new to OOTP, you're getting involved in the tournaments because in the tournaments is where you can win free packs and it's really easy to do. Let me show you how. Right now, I am currently involved in a bronze live tournament. If you go to your tournament tab in Perfect Team, you can sign up for up to three tournaments at any one time. This video is going to show you how to become more successful, at least starting to become successful in the live bronze tournament. These are tournaments where only live bronze or lower cards can be used. Currently, I am in a tournament, the Gym Unknown Blue Jays. We're doing well. We've won our first two games. And again, as a double elimination, you're in the tournament until you lose two games. Let's take a look at my pitching staff. Again, I like to go with 12 pitchers. You can probably get away with 11, but I like to go with 12 because if you go further into the tournament and you're doing well, you don't want them to wear out so that by the time you get to the semifinals or finals, your pitching staff is dead tired. So probably go with 12. You may want to even go with one specialist. I use Tim Hill. And if we look at his ratings, look at how splitty he is. That means he's good against one side compared to the other. Much better against left-handed hitters. So I've got one specialist, five starters, a couple closers, couple setup and a couple middle relievers. Here is my batting lineup and feel free to use this lineup or use some of these players. If you're new to the game, this is a really good starting point for you. You can pick up these cards for probably less than 2000 perfect points total. Really cheap to do. I like to have guys with a lot of power and really decent eye and avoid Ks. I'm not concerned so much about the contact or gap power. I want home run hitters. I want guys that can pound the ball. And as you see, I have five against the lefties and the righties. Not too worried about stealing. I don't plan on trying to be too aggressive on the base paths, but I do like good defense for my center fielders for my second base, for my shortstop. I want guys that aren't going to make too many critical errors in the infield and in the outfield. Let's take a look at some of the players I use. Currently, I'm using three catchers because a catcher sometimes can play multiple positions like this player here. And you can use them for DH. Notice how this catcher is much better against the left-handed pitchers. So you may want to slot them in into a position they're probably going to be more successful at. Maybe just against the lefties and not against both. You can also compare players. So I'm going to compare two of my catchers. Kirk and Wilson, I can compare them. See who is more suitable against the lefties and who is more suitable against the righties. And then plot them in where they're going to be more likely to succeed. Again, you can switch out the players left and right. You can put in, okay, I want them filling in as a defensive sub or filling in every fourth game, every fifth game. Play around with how often you want each of your players in the lineup. Takes a little bit of practice, but like I said, feel free to use my lineup as kind of a starting point. My other catcher is a power guy, Cal Rayleigh. Really good on both sides of the plate. He can hit the lefties, he can hit the righties. Really good ratings. Not going to get a lot of singles, but he's going to hit a lot of home runs. So I have him hitting fourth against the lefties, and I have him hitting fifth against the righties. I want him in lineups full time to try and utilize that power. Next up, let's take a look at my, let's sort out here, 
my first baseman, Miranda, Jose Miranda, someone I've added recently to the lineup. I like that he can hit fairly good against lefties and righties. He's got fairly good defensive ratings, and he's going to pop out a home run every once in a while. So I have him hitting third. I want to get him on base for my power hitters. Cabrera, here's where you want utility and you want defense with a little bit of speed. Sacrifice the hitting ability to get speed, utility at many positions, and that infield defensive ability. Same with Castro. Look at him. He can play seven different positions. That's going to be handy later on in a tournament. Range is pretty good. Speed is average and has a little bit of hitting ability. Longoria. Here's a guy that most teams use. Got good power against the lefties, against the righties. Pretty decent at third base. Probably not going to commit too many errors. I have him hitting 7th against the righties and 2nd against the left-handed pitchers. Crawford, you want good defense at shortstop. He's got pretty good defense, okay base running ability, and he's got really good avoid Ks. Not a lot of teams use Crawford, but I like him. Same with Seager. I'm sacrificing a little bit of offense for his defensive ability and power. Going to hit one out of the ballpark every once in a while for you. Let's go and take a look at Crawford versus Seager. Again, you're probably going to want to use Seager a little bit more against the lefties. Maybe split them in terms of time played against the righties because each has their strength and weakness at the plate. All right, let's take a look at my outfielders. Outfield, you want good defense, and again, you want to try and get that power. Speed's not really important. So I have Ryan McKenna, really good left fielder, but he can also play center field and right field. Next, I have Kyle Schwarber. Yes, another very popular bronze live card. Look at that power, but the difference is you kind of don't want to start him against the lefties. He's got okay power against the lefties, but I definitely want to use him against the righties. So I have him hitting cleanup against the righties and not even starting against the left pitchers. Next, we have Trent Grisham. He's a guy that I move back and forth with my other center fielder. I have him at the top of the lineup when I use him there and really good defense. The other one is Derek Hill. Great range, probably the top center field range of all bronze live cards. Again, I use him at the top of the lineup and when I compare these two, Grisham looks a little bit better with the bat but when I look at their defense, Hill's a little bit better in the outfield. Not by much, but a little bit of an improvement. So again, I rotate these guys in and out. Right now with this lineup, I have Derek Hill starting leadoff first and Grisham coming in every third game. So it's, again, something you might want to experiment with and play around a little bit to see who you want to give more playing time to. And my last outfielder, someone I highly recommend that you get, Mike Yastrzemski. Again, he can play all three outfield positions, little bit better against one side compared to the other. I have him hitting ninth against the righties, and I have him hitting seventh against the lefties. So play around a little bit, move players in and out of the lineup as best suited for the type of game that you want to create for your players and go check out the leaderboard either halfway through the tournament or after the tournament is done and take a look who's performing well not only for the hitters but for the pitchers take a look at the war take a look at the strikeouts take a look at the saves who's getting saves who's coming out of the bullpen and doing well for other teams Again, checking in on the tournament, we have 
won our round three game. So we are going to the quarterfinals and have a very good chance of finishing in the top four. And yes, winning those free packs. Again, double elimination. You start on the left side of the bracket. Once you lose a game, you move over to the right-hand side of the bracket. And when you lose two games, you're out. You're done. Go enter another tournament. Because again, you're allowed to enter three at a time. And it's the green that you see there that shows your current active tournaments. So you'll notice I had three running right now. Once your tournament's done, go check it out. Go see where you made some mistakes, where you might need to improve. So here's a tournament I had earlier in the day. And it's a little bit of a different team because I made some adjustments between this morning and this evening. So let's take a look at the morning team. And the Jays did really well. We actually won this tournament. We won every single game until we made the final and then we lost one of the three. So hey, first place means 10 standard packs. My pitching is pretty close to the same other than I added another pitcher for my afternoon team because my bullpen was getting a little bit fatigued. So here's a case of I said, yep, I want 12 pitchers. For my hitters, took a look at the stats, and one guy jumped out at me, the silver, or the uh, iron Matt Carpenter. Didn't do too well. He hit 192, he was a liability, so I said, I need to replace him. And I also replaced Sanchez. Didn't hit too well, didn't play many games, only played the one game, so he's the guy I took out to put in my 12th pitcher. So. 12 pitchers, 14 hitters, Grisham I had starting in this lineup, Derek Hill I have starting in my current lineup. Again, look at the leaderboard from this finished tournament. Look at the Longorias, look at the Yastrzemskis. Go and look at the batter war. And sometimes, yeah, you're going to come across players that, hey, who is this guy? Maybe I should try him out. He led the tournament in war. I don't use him. But if I'm looking for a, another center fielder, maybe he's the next guy I give a shot to. By no means am I an expert. By no means am I guaranteeing you wins and all these free packs. Everyone plays the game differently. I go based on feel and looking at past results. But there are many, many other OOTP players that are really good at number crunching and have different statistical models where they come up with their best players. Either way can work. You see, I won this tournament. So hey, 10 packs doing it my way, but other players will win tournaments doing it their way. This is simply, again, a starting point for you new or kind of beginner players on how you can get going in some of these tournaments to try and win those packs. But again, monitor your teams, go look at past results, and make some tweaks. With my pitching staff, again, I like to focus on movement with my relievers and try and find pitchers that have really high movement. You want them kind of in the blue. Late in the game, you want them to have that nasty pitch. So I have four or five or six really good movement pitchers for my starters. I'm kind of more focused on control. I don't want the game to get out of hand. I want them to have a good handle on their pitches. Strategy, that's up to you. I'll show you what I use. I don't put a lot of weight into running or hit and run or bunting. In bronze tournaments, I don't find that very helpful. Same with the pitch around, intentional walks. I don't have that cranked up, but I do have the defense. Because again, I like to use strong defenders at second, at short, at center field. So I will crank up the defense. I do kind of put a 94, 95, 96 fatigue rate on my hitters and about a 54% on my relievers. Let's take one final look now that the tournament is over and see how the Jays did. Again, typically takes about an hour to finish each of these. So 
keep entering, you're allowed three at any given time. Might as well use all three openings. The Jays lost the quarterfinal, which pushed us to the other side of the bracket. We won, but then we lost in the semifinal. And the Shepherd Pack won this live bronze tournament. But that's okay. We finished third or fourth, so we won three standard packs. Anytime you can win packs when there's 32 teams, if you finish in the top four, you're doing well. So good luck in your tournaments. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some of my other tutorials, especially if you're new to OOTP. I think you'll find a lot of useful tips and hints on how you can become better at the game. Try and win those free packs. If you do win some packs and you pull some good cards based on these tutorials, let me know. Come find me on Twitch. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. That is twitch.tv slash laptop hound. Come join me for some conversation and some OOTP. So let's check out some of these packs and how we did. Have a wonderful day. It is a great day for baseball. Be kind to yourself and someone else this week. And again, join me on Twitch Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern. And if you link your account from OOTP to your Twitch account, you can get more free packs. Ask me on Twitch how you can do that. Have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend, no matter where you are in this world. We'll see you next episode.